Yes. Oh, uh, 10 minutes. So uh, nine for the green, uh, 10 for the yellow, and then 11 for red. Okay. Uh, Glennis, just keep an eye on uh, people that are in the waiting room because I, I won't be keeping a good eye on them. Um, so I made you co-host. So in case like uh, in, someone just comes. Oh, by the way, Nagam just came. So Nagam can be our um, eye counter. Is that okay, Nagam? Okay, good. Okay, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and our uh, guest who's now a member. I'm going to share with you a Toastmasters, a pre-written speech on impromptu speaking. So here's, when you give an impromptu talk, here is some advice on how, how to give it. I actually wanted to give this before the contest and I didn't get a chance to, but here, it, here it is. So the first, the first point is listen. When you, when you listen, you are going to pay attention to what the question is, and you're going to get credibility from the audience that you heard what the question was. And also, it's when you're just having a conversation with someone, people want to know that you heard what they had to say. So the first thing is just listen. The next one is pause. You should actually pause whether you need to pause or not. Like you may think, oh, I, I already know how to answer that one. I'll just go right into it. But it's a good idea to pause anyway, because pause will, well, one, it, it'll let you refresh your thoughts and formulate your answer, but also it can add drama to your speech and adds weight to your speech. So, so the pausing is, is a good thing. And also, a pause is always preferable to using crutch words and filler words. The next thing to do is confirm. Just confirm the question. Confirm that you understood what the other person was saying. And in the case of a table topics question, confirm that you understood the question. And then you just tell it. You want to be enthusiastic. But you, but you also want to stay focused and stick to the essentials. And then finally, you want to bring your message to a close. You want to end it. Once you've said what you want to say, don't belabor the point. Just bring your comments to a close. Now, here's some strategies for answering an impromptu question. So first strategy is just express an opinion. And that in a contest, the question should be one where it asks you to express an opinion. And you, you express an opinion and then you justify it with a supporting statement. In the case of a like a, a short, like, like you're just answering a question, like a table topic, one support item is good enough. If you're giving a, a brief speech, then two or three support items would be good. A variation of that way of expressing opinion is to offer reasons why you agree or disagree with an idea or concept. Here's another one is, is cause and effect. You know, in this one, you state what the situation is and then you discuss what causes it and then what the effects are afterwards. And just, just to give you an example, there was in the contest, there was the question, should we have a holiday after the Super Bowl? So you could say, we 
well, if we have a holiday after the Super Bowl, we're going to be less productive at work. We're gonna, that's one less day of work. So what's going to, should we reduce our pay? Just, just That's just a, a simple strategy. Another way is to break the topic into components. So here you, you take a, a, like a complex topic and you divide and conquer. You break it up in, into components. You don't, uh, some people like engineers will maybe overdo this and get too detailed here, but you wanna break it up maybe into three components and not, not get stuck in the details too much. And another way is discuss the past, present and future. Organize your answer into a timeline. This was the past. Now, this is the way it is. This is the way I see it in the future. So th four simple ways, four simple strategies to answer an impromptu question. Now, here's some, just whatever you do. What, whatever you do, you always are gonna do this, no matter what strategy you choose. The first one is be confident. Remind yourself, part of being confident is it's okay to pause. Pausing is okay. And restating the question will help you to formulate your response. Next one is always be brief. It's easy to stray off topic. And it's also easy to begin repeating statements adding new points that aren't really part of the question, just stick to your main points. Always be sincere. If you, if you don't know the answer to a question and you try to be inventive, that usually doesn't work so well. It's better to admit you don't know and just respond the best you can. Oh, and then th this is just our Area, ta area table topics, which, as you know, we had at the end of February. And just, I encourage everyone to enter that contest because you don't have to do any work to enter. <laughs> and impromptu speaking is really valuable for life. I don't know if I've told you this story here before, but when I first joined Toastmasters, I was a member for three months and uh, I, th I think Sharon, you, you know, Jerry Brooks. Well, Jerry Brooks comes over to me and he says, what's going on, Steve? Your whole personality changed. And now it, it didn't change, <laughs> but, but I, was, I was speaking up in the meetings. I wasn't afraid to speak up just from, that was just from attending Toastmasters every week for three months and speaking on table topics. So my, just brain had learned, oh, you can speak up and it's, it's not gonna be a disaster. <laughs> I, I, so I wasn't so afraid and I would, didn't freeze up then when I would get put on the spot to talk. And just when you enter a, a contest, you get the most benefit for your time. And here's some helpful resources, uh, the, the table topics judging form, which you all should have and then this presentation, which is from the Toastmasters Better Speaker Series. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Steve. I'll ask the timer to give us a minute. So Maha will have time to.